Okay, so you mentioned Teresa signed some paperwork from her husband, and she was a little ignorant in what she was participating in. Now, we've come to find, last time we spoke, we talked about Erica Jane and her wanting the $600,000, um, the money from the house that's supposed to go to the Rui Gomez fa- uh, family, and she's asking for her... Um, the word Homestead is Homestead exemption. Yes, exemption. I was yes. thinking the word eviction, but exemption is, is the term. <laughs> and so now we're finding out that there are documents that have now been submitted that show her, with her signature on it that basically show that she knew Tom was taking out loans against the house and she relinquished her right to any of that money that was owed to the lenders. That's right. And it's the signatures are very odd to me. They are not the two signatures together are not consistent. Right. And what this is, so the the bankruptcy trustee is trying to compromise with the Rui Gomez family. These are clients of Tom. They were injured in the PG&E explosion. They got a $12 million judgment. They only got a million of it. They went to court and sued Tom to get their $11 million back and then had to go back to court because after they won, he didn't pay it. So then they had to go back to try to get it. They have a lien against all of his personal property. So the bankruptcy trustee is trying to resolve the claims that the Rui Gomez family has for this $11 million amount. They're trying to settle it or compromise that amount. Erica Jane came in and it wasn't just her because Tom's first wife also came in and said, wait a second, we have these other claims that we think come first. So if you're going to sell the house, when it sells, we should be paid before the Rui Gomez gets 80% of what's left over. Now, I don't know how this will sort out in the bankruptcy court because I'm still unclear that Erica Jane has any community property rights in that home at all. I don't necessarily think she does. Clearly, her lawyers think she does or they wouldn't be filing this exemption because PR wise, it looks bad. bad. I mean, nobody likes it. Everybody feels like gross. Why? What? Why are you asking for this? But the homestead exemption is something that they are entitled to. Now, Cal 2 is one of the many lenders in the bankruptcy courts that is coming forward saying, look, Tom Girardi and Girardi Keese owe us money because we were financing these lawsuits before they resolved. And the way that kind of lending works is that a lender will kind of front the money to the attorney. The attorney will do all the work on the lawsuit. And when it settles, the lender will get paid back out of the proceeds that come into the attorney because they're working on contingency, which means the client doesn't pay until they receive a settlement. So this lender was having a lot of difficulty with him. I did a podcast episode early on in the bankruptcy about all of the allegations this lender made in the Girardi Keese side of the bankruptcy saying we lent him money and then it didn't get paid. And then we were trying to attach this and they got a judgment against him. What they're saying is Erica signed away her rights and property until they were paid back. So if Tom had passed away and stuff had gone to her, She was signing over the rights to them. That's not uncommon in business lending like this, that if they're attaching property or if there's a personal guarantee that the spouse will say, okay, there's a personal guarantee that comes before my rights as a spouse to any of these monies. And I can't object as a spouse. We saw two of them, which is interesting. The signatures are wildly different. I wonder if Erica will say that Tom signed those. I'm still not confident that she signed both of those, because they're worded very different. One's on Girardi Keys stationary, the other's not. But interestingly enough, they say that she's the only heir. So I'm wondering what's going on with the will behind the scenes too. Mm. Is there no one else in Tom Girardi's will? Is it just Erica? Because it says she's the sole heir. And that's interesting as well, because he has a number of children. Right. So my interpretation of these documents that have come out is basically just that she is not entitled to that $600,000 exemption, but not necessarily that this incriminates her in some sort of way, other than knowing that he was taking out loans. She knew she would have had to have known if she signed these that there was a litigation lender that was saying that they had rights to the house if they weren't paid back. Now, 
how that conversation would probably go is, hey, you know, I've got this lawsuit and this lawsuit and that going and this going. I need more money from Cal, but they want the house attached because they want more collateral. So I need you to sign and say that they have the rights, the collateral. But, you know, this judgment's coming in and that's going to cover this and it's all going to be fine. I imagine that's exactly how that conversation went. If that conversation happened and Tom didn't sign these himself or have somebody at his firm sign them, because again, the, I'm still not 100% that these are Erica's signature because they both look wildly different. So yeah. if she knew, if she signed these, she knew that there was a lender that was taking out a lien on the home, but the home again might not be community property, but they yeah. have a lien on not just the home, they have a lien on all personal property. And that's why she would have signed it because the lien is on everything that he owns, not just the home. I don't think she gets the homestead exemption anyway. I don't think it's community property. Tom could get the homestead exemption, but this is showing that he would have signed that away too, because he's saying anything is waived by Cal to getting it. This is going to be very interesting to see how the court decides it and to see if Erica responds to this at all. I think that'll be very telling. I think people, if anybody has gotten a book signed by Erica Jane at one of her book signings and you have a signature in that book, I think you need to send me a photo of it in the DMs <laughs> so we can compare these signatures and see which one she likely signed. But so basically, because people kept sending this to me and they're like, she knew everything. You see, she's just as crooked as he was. And for me, I was kind of like, this doesn't really, because you also watch the show and you see that with her housewife's contract, he told her she had him look it over and he's like, just sign it. And then she tried to give it to Bravo and they're like, no, you need to have a lawyer look this over. And so like, she wasn't really, she admitted on the show. She wasn't really reading documents. Like she trusted Tom to sign whatever she needed to sign. So she could play dumb like Teresa Judais in this case. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that if he asked her to sign it, it's like, Hey, this is a work thing. Um, if something happens to me, they're just going to get paid first, but don't even worry about it because they're going to get paid out of this thing that's coming down the line. I'm sure it was all the same kind of fast talk he did to the lenders. Yeah. It's very telling to me that neither of these signatures are notarized. I have no idea why a lender that's on the hook with Tom Jordy for $8 million that's already having issues with him paying wouldn't have the signatures of the spouse notarized. The other stuff is notarized. I've seen other documents that she has signed online notarized by the exact same notary that either worked with their law firm, which is not uncommon or unusual. But then why weren't these two things notarized and why didn't the lender have them notarized? It's very telling to me. Telling in the sense that she could possibly kind of walk away. Say that they're... Yeah. Say that she didn't sign them. There's one that looks very much like the signature from the Vanderpump Apollo, uh, the Vanderpump sympathy note. And then there's one that looks nothing like either yeah. of them. So the two signatures are so vastly different um, that there's room for her to argue. I think that she didn't actually sign those. I don't think there's room for her to argue that Tom doesn't owe that. Um, but I also don't know how much it will matter because I'm I still don't think she has a community property interest in the home. He bought it before they were married. There's no indication that she's put money into the home, that she would have done something that that brought her into the home. I really think that the home is still Tom Girardi solo. So aside from having like our conversation last last time, aside from probably having to pay a couple of debts, she's pretty much still criminal, criminally free of any wrongdoing. I mean, there is no... There's potentially a criminal investigation. We know that the judge in Illinois forwarded it to the AUSAs. We know at this point somewhere there are a few AUSAs that have got to be like me going, can we just be the housewives unit at this point? We just <laughs> want to look into all of it. Like we volunteer as tribute. Let us just be the housewives unit at the U.S. attorney's office. But there is an investigation going. It would be very difficult to prosecute Erica on her own without prosecuting her alongside Tom Girardi and the conservatorship will play heavily into whether they will decide to do that or not. It might not be worth the time and resources when he's going through the two bankruptcies, he's being stripped of his license to practice law. It might not be worth it to the AUSAs to prosecute it. Cause at this point, what, to what end, to what end do you prosecute it to put him in jail for a few months? It might not be worth it to them. And they're not going to, I think, prosecute her alone 
But we'll see if they turn up a lot of egregious stuff and fraud and money being laundered and hidden, then my opinion would absolutely change. It's hard because it's like I find myself in having these conversations with people like feeling like I'm almost defending Erica, but also at the same time being like, I'm not trying to defend her. I'm just trying to show that she's not as guilty as I think people want her to be because they dislike the character that they watch on the show. Whereas like with Jen Shaw, yeah. I don't like Jen Shaw's character and Jen Shaw actually looks a lot more criminally responsible and guiltier than we want to believe. But, well, there's a lot more culpability for yeah. Jen Shaw because she's been indicted yeah. by a by grand the jury. Yeah. 